This is way too complicated. Look how complicated I made this. You can see right here, I just got way too much going on for a simple shoot like this. So you guys uh, may or may not have seen the last video that I did uh, all about this 14 to 24 uh, Sigma lens. This lens has caught on a lot since I did that last video. I think I was one of the first ones to get a video out about that lens. I got it pretty early on. Obviously not as big as some of the guys like Frono's Photo and others that have done other reviews on this lens since then. One of the biggest complaints and, and questions that I got from you guys about this lens, and it was, it was a big question for myself as well, is what are you gonna do about ND filters? Because if you saw the, the last video, it was like a follow-up to the other video I did, the original video that I did. I had to really crank that shutter in order to get the uh, exposure to be correct because I could not use that 180 rule. That was the biggest complaint and I, I didn't know what to do. So, um, you can, and if you guys remember, let me make sure I got this in focus. Right here, uh, Sigma built in a little area that you can put something of a ND filter in there. None of us really knew what to do about that. So a company reached out to me. Um, I think they're based in China and they have a product here. It comes in this box. The company's called Haida and it's a rear lens ND filter kit for Sigma 14 to 24 2.8. That's this, this lens. It has ND 0.9, 1.2, 1.8 and 3.0. So what I wanted to do is throw this on there, show you guys uh, how I'm doing this and uh, what it looks like. Comes in a really nice little package here, so we'll unbox it. And um, I just wanted to show you that it does work and I can get a nice uh, one over 50 for my shutter and get proper exposure or 120, whatever you're doing, whatever uh, frame rate you're shooting at and get proper exposure for what you're shooting. Because as we all know, uh, we don't want to have that jittery look in our films, especially if we're looking for that nice, smooth, buttery stuff. Depends on what you're shooting, how much you care about that. Sometimes you just have to crank that shutter, but a lot of times uh, you want to have that nice cinematic look. So let's take a closer look at this. I'm going to get out of this setup because I can't tell if I'm in focus or not, and I'm just going to take some footage with this and see what it looks like. All right, seriously regretting choosing a prime lens for doing this, but the 35 Rokinon is a very nice lens on the C200. But Anyway, um, so again, here's the 14 to 24 on the Sony a7 III. Um, beautiful lens, loving it so far. Done it for some interior stuff, exterior, beautiful lens. Love the 14 to 24. I am going to, let's pull the lens off. Let's cover up our sensor. And I have not put this in yet. So what, you guys will be doing this along with me as I trying to film a decent video for you. So this is kind of a kind of a strange thing if you're like me and have never dealt with something like this before. I know that there are other cameras that have uh, or lenses that you can put ND filters on this side of it, sensor side. But let's go ahead and try it out. Let's open up the box. All right, so here is the box from Haida. They reached out to me on email and just and sent it over. So you can see right there, uh, installation guide here. All right, so here is the box they come in it's just a clear little box and then I'll be careful to not touch them directly this is the 3.0 so this is our this is our darkest option so it comes in it's a nice little I mean you could easily and it comes with little slits inside of this foam so you could quite easily um, keep this in your camera bag it does it's not too this isn't too bulky um, maybe if you already know what you're gonna be shooting I mean again of course variable NDs are gonna be way better but we don't have that option with this lens so here is our clearest option. This is our lowest ND filter at 0.9. It's somewhat sunny out here today, so I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with the 1.2. I'm gonna put that on the Sigma now, and let's see how that's looking. If we see here, we have the whole mechanism. I'm going to, and I'm just eyeballing this. I have not read the instructions. It's kind of. You open up, I think that, that white dot means, this white dot means you are locked in, that's your, after you put it in, so let's unlock it. I'm gonna slide it, drop it in there, like that, and then lock it in. And now it won't, it won't come out. So let's put it on the Sony and see how it works. Okay, so we are now shooting on the Sony. Uh, I am at 150th shutter. 2.8 and again that's kind of the, the issue with 
the whole reason we needed this ND filter. If you want to shoot wide open of whatever your lens is, like a lot of us do, we all always don't want to go down to f4, 5.6, 9, whatever. We want that nice blown out background. Um, and I am at ISO 200, which is the current lowest that this thing will let me go to. Right now, if I did not have this ND filter on, actually, let's do that. Let me take this ND filter off, leave my settings exactly where we're at, 150th, 2.8, 200. I'm gonna take the ND filter off and show you what this image would look like without this ND filter on right now. Okay, here we are, same settings. Here is what I had in there, I took it out. So obviously you can see, Again, 150th, 2.8, 200 ISO, completely blown out. And again, it's probably the picture profile I'm using as to why I can't get lower than ISO 200, but it doesn't matter. You want your lowest possible ISO. So I think these are a pretty good option. So now, if I wanted to get the proper exposure, I'm at 24 frames a second, I'm going to have to start cranking that shutter. So now I am at shutter 1600 versus one over 50 like we want. So you're gonna see it's gonna look way too sharp, uh, especially if I was moving. If I was sitting still or whatnot, this wouldn't be such an issue. Um, it still looks strange if you have the eye for it. I think these are gonna be, these are a really good option. I will link them below so that you can find them. I believe they have a way to link. And um, maybe there's other options out there as well, but I'm really impressed with these. I'm really glad that I have them. All right, so we're back over at the C200. So you can see, uh, hopefully you can see ISO 1600 2.8. In case you didn't believe me, that's what I was at after I took out this ND filter. So I think that these are a great option. I know, if I'm not mistaken, did, uh, I should have looked at the box, but didn't it come with some sort of a tool or something like that so that you know exactly what size to cut this at? So maybe you can kind of cut your own ND filters and put them in. I'm sure that as this starts becoming more of a thing that companies will um, cr start creating more of these. Um, so again, this company is called Haida, and I will do my best to link them in the description below. Um, but this is a really good, and, I, and again, I, I don't make any money off of this. They just sent this over to me for free. Uh, I, you know, I, I don't, I barely have a thousand subscribers, so don't worry. Um, but it's not an affiliate link. But I, as filmmakers, we need the right tools to do, do what we need. So. I think that these are really impressive. I think that they will do the job for you. A little inconvenient with having to swap them out and maybe you'll just get better at knowing what your light is at and how which one of these you need to put in. Just like on our, on our drones, I guess, where we have to put our, our ND filters on our, on our Mavic Pros or whatever. But I hope this was helpful to you. If you know of any other companies doing this or if you have another way of doing this yourself, make sure you put it in the comments below. Uh, but for now, I'm really glad that I have these and I have an option to um, get the proper exposure and everything with this lens.